Chapter 15 A Godly Birthday Party They took Carter to a different dormitory, so I don't know how he slept, but I couldn't get a wink. It would have been hard enough with Zia's comments about passing our tests or dying, but the girls' dormitory just wasn't as posh as Amos' mansion. The stone walls sweated moisture. Creepy pictures of Egyptian monsters danced across the ceiling in the torchlight. I got a floating cot to sleep in, and the other girls in training, initiates, Zia had called them, were much younger than me. So when the old dorm matron told them to go to sleep straight away, they actually obeyed. The matron waved her hand, and the torches went out. She shut the door behind her, and I could hear the sound of locks clicking. Lovely, imprisoned by a nursery school dungeon. I stared into the dark until I heard the other girls snoring. A single thought kept bothering me, an urge I just couldn't shake. Finally, I crept out of bed and tugged on my boots. I felt my way to the door and tugged at the handle, locked as I suspected. I was tempted to kick it until I remembered what Zia had done at the Cairo airport broom closet. I pressed my palm against the door and said, Sahid. Locks clicked. The door swung open. That's a handy trick. Outside, the corridors were dark and empty. Apparently, there wasn't much nightlife in the first gnome. I sneaked through the city, back the way that we'd come, and saw nothing but an occasional cobra slithering across the floor. After the last couple days, that didn't even faze me. I thought about trying to find Carter, but I wasn't sure where they'd taken him, and honestly, I wanted to do this on my own. After our last argument in New York, I wasn't sure how I felt about my brother. The idea that he could be jealous of my life while he got to travel the world with Dad? Please. And he had the nerve to call my life normal. All right, I had a few mates at school like Liz and Emma, but my life was hardly easy. If Carter made a social faux pas or met people he didn't like, he could just move on. I had to stay put. I couldn't answer simple questions like, where are your parents, or what does your family do, or even, where are you from, without exposing just how odd my situation was. I was always the different girl, the mixed race girl, the American who wasn't American, the girl whose mother had died, the girl with the absent father, the girl who made trouble in class, the girl who couldn't concentrate on her lessons. After a while, one learns that blending in is simply doesn't work. If people are going to single me out, I might as well give them something to stare at. Red stripes in my hair? Why not? Combat boots with the school uniform? Absolutely. Headmaster says, I'll have to call your parents, young lady. I say, good luck. Carter don't know anything about my life. But enough of that. The point was, I decided to do this particular bit of exploring alone, and after a few wrong turns, I found my way back to the Hall of Ages. What was I up to, you may ask? I certainly didn't want to meet Monsieur Evil Creepy or Old Lord Salamander again, but I did want to meet those images, the memories Zia had called them. I pushed open the bronze doors. Inside, the hall seemed deserted. No balls of fire floated around the ceiling, no glowing hieroglyphics, but images still shimmered between the columns, washing the hall with strange, multicolored light. I took a few nervous steps. I wanted another look at the Age of Gods. On our first trip through the hall, something about those images had shaken me. I knew Carter thought I'd gone into a dangerous trance, and Zia had warned that the scenes would melt my brain. But I had a feeling she was just trying to scare me off. I felt a connection with those images, like there was an answer within, a vital piece of information that I needed. I stepped off the carpet and I approached the curtain of golden light. I saw sand dunes shifting in the wind, storm clouds brewing, crocodiles sliding down the Nile. I saw a vast hall full of revelers. Then I touched the image.